<laughs> Welcome to the Inspired Evolution. And the stars have aligned today. We have with us Alex Stefan. Alex, how are you, brother? I'm doing awesomely. Thank you. Yo! It is so good to have you here, bro. I am so excited for the next 40 minutes, hour, whatever precipitates. Um, for those listening into Alex's vibe for the first time, right? Alex Stefan, business consultant, best selling author, award winning presenter. Like, Captivating <laughs> in so many ways. He's formerly a director of show quality at Disney. Maybe that explains the, the captivatingness <laughs> a little bit. Um, his professional focus is innovation management and the future of work and how that all looks for us. Um, Alex's mission is to make transformation more joyful for leaders, right? He works with businesses such as Mercedes, Airbnb, Huawei, and uh, he works on the design of digital ecosystems and the innovation of the communities there, right? Alex is the co-founder of Growth Masters. Can't wait to dive into this it's an invite only adventure mastermind it combines crowdsource coaching and accountability systems to push entrepreneurs to the next exciting stages in their businesses Boom! it is so good to have you here thank you <laughs> so alex we we've met here in uh at mind valley u and it's been like an absolute um I don't know, like, we went and watched Nassim's talk, right? And it talks about, like, how people, like, there's a, there's just a gravitational pull towards certain things and towards other things. I find myself consistently connected to you, mm-hmm. bumping into you all the time. Uh, like, everywhere we meet, we continue to continue to have these continued drop-ins. Love it. Love, love the, uh, love just the vibe you bring to connection. And uh, I'm fascinated by whether that has any influence towards what inspired you to create masterminds initially. Hmm. It, it, yeah, definitely. So um, the story started years ago, many mm. years ago, in fact. So I had a pretty tough childhood. Some of the story you already know, right? Yeah. And um, what happened was when I moved from a, from a, you know, pretty tough childhood, when I did my first job and I moved from then Austria, where I was studying to my first job at a startup in the Netherlands, I touched base there. I had an amazing team. We worked on very cool stuff uh software as a service platform for mentorship yeah and um we we had a blast i arrived and i felt still lonely so i felt super lonely i i didn't really connect with with people there on the level that i wanted i also wanted to grow and this wasn't available to me and i didn't know how to solve it i i touched base with a couple people but essentially i was looking for for something else until with my uh, then colleague at that company, we started doing small dinners and we would bring people together on certain topics just, you know, to discuss these things that you normally don't speak about because Mm. you don't go deep, because you don't go uh, and and open up and really become vulnerable before you share your opinion about something. So we would tackle the challenging topics where people have different viewpoints. Uh You know, um, health, nutrition, yeah. or things like even femininity, th- mm. stuff like that, right? So I was going to ask like technical questions or like some of them technical, but some of them like soft science or the social behavior types. Of social things. behavior, most yeah, of them, even yeah. religion, stuff like that, where usually it's hard to, to have people um, mingle from different viewpoints yeah. and come to a conclusion where everybody's fine with everybody's yeah. different yeah. view. Homogenous and then like non-homogenous sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And we had dinners. It was great. We had these two to three hour sessions and it would evolve into uh, a regular thing. Yeah. And uh, it, I loved it. And it was the first time I unconsciously created a mastermind. Yo. And um, and I was brilliant. I learned a lot. I grew yeah. a lot. I made friends. It was it was real deep connection. And in hindsight, years later, I realized what was the power of it. Right. Uh-huh. And there's essentially three things built in that I that I hadn't at the time realized, mm. but I naturally with my colleague weaved them into the into the design. Yeah. And uh, essentially it was a beautiful space. Mm. So a space where learning is um is comfortable, where where sharing is 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 welcomed. Yeah. Um, because you feel at home, let's say. Let's talk more about the environment uh-huh. that you're in for education. Can, I know there's a few dot points you're going through at the moment, so maybe just lightly, mm-hmm. but the environment and why that's so important. I feel like there's multiple levels to environment. You need to be inspired by the actual setting. Mm. Like right here, we're in this beautiful old uh, house in, in Estonia, and mm. I came in and I was like, 
wow, this has the, the wall is wood and then yeah. the outside is wood and yeah. it's it's just pretty. So so that's one. Mm. But also the environment. I mean, you came up the street. I saw you with this huge smile. <laughs> and, and it was, it was yeah. just phenomenal. That's environment yeah. too, right? Yeah. And then and then one aspect is also your state, which is the environment mm. you create in every moment uh, yeah. that you're living, right? I love that. Um, and 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 then share also because your energy radiates and we mm. connect or we don't and then by that we create energy right yeah that was one of the most profound insights i had growing up and going to um just hanging out with friends mm. i realized that you know like going to a certain party at a certain place made a certain type of environment but i realized that each individual carries with them an environment as well mm-hmm. right because it had such an impact on like how your night would unfold depending on who you were with and that was like your environment so mm. i totally understand what you're alluding to yeah i love that and then and then one other aspect is the obvious one where you know if you are um if you're hanging out in a place like it's dark and it's maybe rainy and it might be a little cold yeah it's a different story to if you were if you're under the palm tree in 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 the shade but in the in the sun sun's around you the birds are chirping and you know this kind of decision making process is completely altered by that they've done tests on like jury members and like they've given them warm coffees uh-huh. Right before they make the decision, and because that warmth radiates into their hands, radiates into their being, they're much more softer on the on the verdicts oh, rather than that. if they gave them ice cold drinks, uh-huh. then they're actually colder and they feel colder and they're like much more ruthless in their decision making. I, love it. I didn't that, know that. Isn't uh-huh. that fascinating though? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Super fascinating, and I believe strongly in it. So. What we did, did then, mm. back then, was we had beautiful spaces that we cooked in together. Yeah. So we created an environment through action and also through setting. And we were already ready for what came because uh, we had created the space. Uh-huh. Yeah, so that's that's just one, right? That's, awesome. the, that's the number one uh, point. Um, and then you want to have a state of vulnerability. That's point number two, right? Mm. That we naturally did back then and that I'm now recreating in the masterminds that I'm creating with my business partner these days, right? Um, and the state of vulnerability is something that in learning is for me one of the key <coughs> points. And we don't do this often, right? We, we, we go to school, you know, uh, prim- primary school or secondary school, and the environment that we're in is, is almost like competition. You know, teachers yeah. grade us, so we, we, we want to compete on that level. Uh, then we, we grow up in this environment often, at least at least where I grew up, um, where we try to be better than the other person, mm. right? We're trying to, you know, kind of fight. Well, we're the other. graded against each other, right? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So, um, and then you see the, the the other end of the spectrum where people show up and they are very vulnerable. They're very open, mm. and they share things about themselves that they would only share with close friends. Um, what happens after you do that, and everybody is on the same page on a deeper level? is an incredible potential for learning, for sharing, for accepting feedback, for pushing the other that you don't have if you're just in a workshop setting and people are sharing, you know, um, consulting or coaching each other, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So... Um, when did that first show up as part, like one of the biggest pieces of the puzzle? Like we talked environment, mm-hmm. but now vulnerability. Like was that just something that people, when you first started out doing these, it was naturally a point that people were bonding over? Or was that just something that was introduced over time or was encouraged? How did that get cultivated as part of the piece? I think my awareness of it came quite late. Mm. Um, and then I reflected back and realized that we've been doing it then even, right? This yep. was 20, 2014. Mm. Um, we were doing this, but not knowingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Unconsciously competent. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So um, I'm, I feel like when we did the design for our masterminds, uh, we brought together to the table, my, my business partner, Jimmy Narain and myself, we brought mm. to the table a lot of experience from previous, you know, designs from previous work yeah. from our lives. And we got it together into the format that we have right now. And somewhere there, we came up with the idea that the moment you spend time on these uh, in workshops often these are games right you mm. meet the first day and you you do an hour or two of some certain certain game bonding team yeah. building activity yep. and, and and people naturally get into a state where they want to share more and sure. where they have the same vibe right mm. but that wasn't enough for us what we figured was if we can go really deep if we can achieve a state where at the end of the day one mm. wherever we go no matter how long our mastermind is because we have different formats day one is entirely designed just for vulnerability if we can do that then the depths that we can do in day two and three or day two to ten depending on the length yeah. is radical it's 10x yeah. if not if not more 
Right. Um, because people feel like family. People feel like brothers and sisters because of what they went through and because of what they are able to share. Mm. So suddenly every contact after that becomes more meaningful. Yeah. So that's what the design is right now. So we realized this. We, we built it in. We tested it. It proved right. And now we're doing it every time. Amazing. And people are loving it. Amazing. So, so we really focus on this as a fundamental part. And yeah. It makes a lot of sense because a lot of learning is emotional, right? And so like yeah. tapping into the vulnerability is like the easiest hack and like cut through to like the deeper sense of your emotion as well. And so having stuff not only like to communicate, but also then like learning from that deep space would be such a great way to learn and have things stick as well. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I'm loving it. It's it's and I'm learning every time. Yeah. You know, <laughs> when when people share their adventures, their experiences, their pains. Yeah. And I'm I'm a I'm a student and I'm learning all these aspects of life. That's beauty. That's yeah. you know, that's joy for me too. Yeah. Right. And then and then to to add to that, that the third one that I realize is powerful, which also we were doing back then and are now intensifying with the work we're doing right now is it's essentially activities that really push your comfort zone. Mm. And this might be something like like climbing over a high cliff uh, or, or literally jumping down uh, attached to a rope, jumping down a, a, a tall bridge and swinging into the, into the canyon. Yeah. Um, and um, this is the type of, you know, um, skydiving adventure, th- those types of things. And yeah. often you find these things built into adventure seminars or something like this to, mm. to give people a kick. Yeah. Um, what we figured, it's not really for the kick. We want to channel a certain energy, an mm. excitement, a realization, and channel it into the work we do afterwards. So it's right. a very strategic choice. Mm. It, it does create, you know, all these endorphins and it does create this feeling of, wow, I'm overcoming a fear that I thought was impossible to overcome. Uh-huh. I could never jump off that bridge. And pushing through feet. fears is like the yumminess on the other side of that is... <sighs> and then to... To use this energy and channel it is the actual benefit. Yeah. Because people, the same day that we do these things, we sit down and we do exercises mm. that help them take the power. You know how um, how there's there's arguments that you can channel sexual energy, right, for your work and mm-hmm. become become more competent and more creative. creative. Yeah. Um, same argument, right? You channel that uh, that transformation of fear, mm. um, and you you channel it for your work. You become so much more powerful, yeah. effective, creative, like you said. And um, that's another thing we do. And yeah, it's, it was a realization over time, right? And I'm, I'm so grateful to be combining these things mm. to a new kind of thing that I'm loving. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of bringing together the three parts. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because we've deep dived into like really the, the depth of, of the mastermind and the offerings. But, you know, and there's something that I really want to talk to, which is the, the just... There's this kindred vibe that we share, which is the student of life. Mm -hmm. You know, it's Mm -hmm. like, yes, there's an offering of like holding space for people to go through their stuff. But with the inspired evolution, this is just, I'm just humbly learning, you know, and Mm -hmm. just sharing that vibe onwards. And I I totally feel that when, you know, you go to your masterminds, it's like, there's no authority, you know, it's like, we're all in this together. It's how can we learn from each other and grow? You know, at the end of the day, some of the best pieces of, um, uh, I'm missing a word here, but some of the best offerings that are created are fundamentally created where people are like in my humble opinion humbly creating something for themselves Hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and it's like Mm -hmm. and those happen to have the most prolific impact because they're so authentic Mm -hmm. so real they're coming from that vulnerable place right the environment is stitched in like really nice for them to then go in and offer that for everyone else and i really respect that perspective of the student of life was that something that was cultivated over time this learning attitude or was it something that was mm. always perhaps in the dna of uh we'll get to smiley alex soon <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so this i feel like this has been um the case for a long time i had a very dramatic experience when i was very little three mm. years old uh, i had a, an illness and uh, i came out of this my mom always said i fought the illness myself rather than the medicine um it was maybe that transformation that made me super joyful there's these pictures of me when i was little maybe six years old with this huge smile like yours <laughs> this huge smile and just just enjoying it i mean I'm, yeah. this is the, the quality that kids have right yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and this is very likely not unique to me but i feel like i had a a, a certain amount of lightness and joyfulness mm. in me like always mm-hmm. and even through my struggle in my teens 
and I I preserved it. Uh-huh. And maybe it strengthened it, even strengthened it. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's that curiosity that built me and led me to where I'm now because the between my teens and and recently I was uh, traveling the world for almost 10 years yeah. living in different spaces um, and and exploring and that curiosity that learning attitude that funneled or, or fueled let's say fueled yeah. uh, this adventure this yeah. journey and I wouldn't be who I am if I if I didn't experience and express this uh, curiosity learning attitude from early on i think it's so vital and so fundamental because we often look at um for me creativity is like the natural order of like creation and like life and there's like creativity is like nature's always creating stuff Mm -hmm. so like how much can we bring creativity into our own lives is like to align ourselves with the natural laws and the natural ways that things are occurring but i feel like you know a lot of creativity stems from love like Mm -hmm. i'm gonna sound like a hippie here but Mm -hmm. it all stems from love because love connect creates the connection and then you create from there right um but i think even preceding that is like the adventure Mm -hmm. you know it's like going on the adventure to love to be creative and preceding that i often look at curiosity as being the seed Mm -hmm. you know it's like because i feel like the universe is just looking in on itself from your perspective from my perspective and inherently in that it's just curious that like how can i marvel at myself and look in on myself Mm -hmm. you know it's like like a natural nature law set up whatever natural law Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and that curiosity is uh is so fundamental you know and uh, i really respect how you've cultivated that and go go groove that through your journey thanks and so traveling you like you said traveling for 10 years (laughs) yeah so i was um i was 15 when i say travel it has not the not the aspect of a nomad Mm. not the aspect of a um you know vagabond Mm. it's more like i moved from place to place and it started out very it was a transformation which was which started out very solidly not crazily yeah um but i was basically gone from germany where i grew up i grew up in a small southern german town outside munich and i was gone for 10 years with one interception of one year back in back in that place right wow so essentially my my after I got really bored in school, I shared this uh, the other day on stage about, um, you know, creating a learning environment that, that is powerful. Yeah. Um, I was very bored and I, my parents saw this and gave me the opportunity to actually travel and m- live in Wales mm. and be in a boarding school for my final years of education, right? And um, that was the, the kickstart of it all. So I, I spent three years in an environment that I that, that I didn't know before yep. the language around me i did speak english from school right but it was everything was in english so i was challenged all the time i was living wow. by the sea by the mountains i was it was so different i was making yeah. new friends right and that kick-started it all and then after that i moved to the states for a year working there and then i i studied in i went back to europe i studied in austria and then mm. i lived in in peru and all mm. these places right i learned russian in ukraine and um, I just try to move on and learn as much as I could learn mm-hmm. from the people that are so different to me. Mm-hmm. I went to, I made it a point to go to places that are so different that people often don't dare to go. Mm-hmm. And this has always made me very curious. So places that just came out of war, like mm-hmm. Bosnia um, or places or Rwanda, yeah. um, places where people have a completely different view on the world because they either shut off or they just came out of a traumatic um, experience Colombia being another example yeah. um, um, and you can learn so much from them right yeah. we think we ha- have all the knowledge in the West but the truth is we, we have just one narrow aspect of uh, looking at the world right of course and you can learn so much from from people that live in countries that we don't touch base with Totally, like Iran, totally, yeah. places like this. So I made it a point to go mm. to these types of places. So because like long before there was personal development in my life, and I'm not sure how, like how long it's been woven into yours, like growth and personal development, there was always this aspect of traveling, right? Mm. And traveling really excited me, but especially exactly because of what you shared. Um, connecting with people from different cultures broadens your ma- like your map, your horizons, your like your the way you think is just completely revolutionized when you're interacting from someone with a different culture and you realize that the whole culture has a whole nother way of being and living and it's just like you really interface with a core part of yourself which is like wait okay so that's just culture mm-hmm. who are we really <laughs> you know yeah. 
Yeah. And it's so fascinating to interact with these people. And I love I love your curiosity to travel to these places where people are most drastically different because mm-hmm. obviously you're coming in from a place for relative peace. Yeah. And then traveling to like post post war or post trauma, like what's going on and like what are the people like in those zones. Mm-hmm. That's really fascinating. I would love to explore the idea and it's not a perfect little segue, but let's go there, which is like, you know, at some point there would have been, was there at any point that there was like a, like I'm going to use the word normal, which is obviously the wrong word. Um, but like a, the mainstream sort of, you know, like Alex could have, you know, worked in a, ended <laughs> up, you know, yeah, he's already laughing. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, like, you know, just like could have ended up, I think we used this example before, like the executive McDonald's or something, mm-hmm. you know, like mm-hmm. worked in the, like something that was a bit more mainstream, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, is it the curiosity underlying that that would never have allowed that to happen? Uh, mm. And not why you're an entrepreneur or a consultant and this sort of stuff? Or Interesting. Like, yeah, yeah. Definitely there was. So two, two touch points really mm. the first one my family's full of doctors so my dad my brother my my granddad my uncle yeah. it's like it's a it's a thing in our family yeah. so my dad would have loved me to be a doctor too <laughs> just because i guess this is a thing right yeah. you have a lawyer as a dad they I, that's a tent, trend yeah um i did look into it and i did an internship in the clinic at home and i did an internship in his practice my dad's practice and I, there's more, there wasn't, there wasn't the resonance with, with sure. this work. Um, and I noticed that's not me. So I did business studies. Mm. So I was aligning towards going into the, into the, um, normal workforce kind yeah. of thing. Right. So I was studying business studies in undergrad and I did internship at internships at like, for example, T-Mobile yeah. and, uh, and Bosch, a large industrious company. Right. And um, that was the, the second touch point, in fact. So I was in a in a half year uh, training program at, at Bosch. And so I I must have been there for like six weeks with me, with my attitude, like, <laughs> like, like always joyful coming in all power and, and, yeah. and bring it on. Yeah. And I want to change. Like back then I was, I was, you know, young and naive as well. And I yeah. was coming in with this, you know, I want to change the world today yeah. kind of attitude. But either way, it was, it was in a way, lots of energy went all, mm. all different directions, but also there was a lot that I could bring to the table with this positive attitude. Yeah. Um, and then there was this day, maybe around six weeks into the program where not my direct boss, but a, a boss that was kind of working with me on part on some projects. He, he asked me to come to his, his office in the morning. I came in and he's, uh, he's there in front of me. He says, um, Alex, just, just let it go. Stop it. And he meant it. I, I noticed this weird thing where he, he didn't mean it in a bad way. He didn't say change. I don't want you to be that way. I instantly felt that he meant like, like you have to make a decision because this energy doesn't fit this place. Mm. And he says, I've been here 40 years. I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, it wasn't, it was a wise thing to say for Mm. him, from him, uh, because he made me aware of what was happening. There was such a dissonance between my attitude and, uh, and the, the vibe of of that place, which isn't necessary to, the fault of of the place it's 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 a large company right yeah. and these systems fall into place and of then course. so what happened was i noticed and i'm so grateful for that experience i noticed i'm not made for that place mm. um because i would waste a lot of energy i would adapt to the environment mm. and i would lose what makes me me because um, mm. i preserved this joyfulness right yeah. and it's i'm glad i did so he made me aware and i'm i'm so grateful because Following that, I stuck to who I am, developed that deeper, became more of who I am, mm. um, and made a decision that this is not the environment I want to ever be in. Yeah, uh, and instead seek uh, places like that uh, first first actual work that I did mm. in what I mentioned earlier in the software company for for mentorship. Yeah, which had more meaning to me, which was a smaller team with a lot of values that resonated with me, uh, which was agile and young and quick yeah. and. You know, these things where you can be creative and implement the creativity in a very uh, fast fashion. And structured, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and work on something that I've always been passionate about, which is education. But that time in this in this training program was a fundamental part of realizing mm. I'm not going to be um, to that, to that yeah. direction. I even gave a talk a few years later about, you know, corporate or, or startup. Mm. Where it's, it's not black and white, but often startups have this environment where... You can explore more of the creativity where corporates give you more of this 
um, training towards a leadership role yeah. kind of training, right? Yeah. And I'm super grateful. So, so th those moments existed, and I'm glad I noticed quickly, and I'm glad I, I, I took steps quickly um, to course correct, let's say, mm. and make sure that even though I invested all my study time into this trajectory that would lead me yeah. ending up in a leadership role at maybe a consulting firm or or a large industrial company, industrial company, I didn't, right? Mm. And that led me to work in, in a few places that are more like startups and then to afterwards uh, farm my own business and start on my own, right? Amazing. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. So <laughs> with the, like, okay, so we've touched on there a little bit. Smiley Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so how integral has it been and how conscious of a role have you played in cultivating that joyfulness and that attitude and like you know anyone that comes across your path can i easily identify like obviously we got some like the 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 course corrections a little mm. bit in that story as well so thank you so much for sharing that but like has that been like a, a centerpiece in terms of cultivating like following your bliss somewhat or following your joy or was it almost like you had to like deter from it a little bit to then come back to it and like tell us more about because hmm. i know it's, it's like a big part of um like in the background, like it means like a lot to you to, to, to radiate joy and infect other people with your joy. I mean, mm. it's really, it really works. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. You know? Thanks so much. And so I just want to, yeah, like tap into that a little bit. Somebody who made me very aware of it was my granddad. Mm. He's dead now, but I remember so much of him. I love this guy. And he always, my two older brothers and I, we always received one single message from him. Mm. Uh, he would always finalize sent sentences or, or encounters with him with the words, be joyfully diligent. Oh. And I remember this until today, and I will always remember it. I will always live by it. Um, because he, well, he fought in the war. Like, he grew up in a completely different environment. His early 20s, his, his teens and his early 20s was literally spent in war, fighting another nation, fighting humans. Yeah. Um, and then he survived and he, he, he rebuilt, he helped rebuild a country, mm. essentially. And um, it's crazy how much transformation can happen into, into peaceful, into yeah. peace, right? And he learned a lot from this. Uh, so here comes the diligence part, right? He's, he was always diligent his whole life. He was hardworking and he taught us that and wealth and abundance um, comes from diligence um, primarily. Um, next to other things but also that a well-lived life is built on joy mm. and that you can't live without it yeah. so that was a reminder and it kept being a reminder as i grew up which i'm so grateful for uh, and it's also the encounters with people that were so different to me you know people there's this story i went to bosnia i mentioned this before i went to bosnia and i went to a town called mostar which was a central central um fighting place in the war in the 90s it was a war where neighbors would turn against each other because of their different beliefs. Mm. And uh, you'd have a place where a, a, a person would one day be the neighbor of another person. The next day, uh, he had shot the son of his neighbor because of what was going on in the war. Mm. Yep. The interesting thing, I mean, this happens all around the world, has happened for centuries and, and thousands of years. The interesting thing what I realized when I was there is when the country came back together, the peace started happening, you'd have the same two people be neighbors again. They move back to their houses and they live door to door and they get on with life and they get on with their relationship. And there's still this aspect where this one guy has killed the other guy's son. That's insane. This is... This is so much that I can I could learn so much about what it means to be human out of that. And I wish epiphanies like this are given to every young person. So mm -hmm. we don't become complacent and and take things for granted that we have. It's not about understanding how dreadful war is. It's about understanding forgiveness and understanding where real joy comes from, gratitude, and these deeply human abilities that you think are impossible after certain experiences. Mm -hmm. Or another story, which is much more of a, on the beautiful side, I, I learned from my ex-girlfriend a few years ago who traveled and lived in Tajikistan. Mm. I'm, I'm doing a trip there in six weeks, so I'm super excited. Nice. And uh, she, she taught me, she told me, 
that there's a there's a belief in Tajikistan where uh, people that own houses they don't actually own their house. Mm -hmm. um, their house is owned by everybody who's ever a guest in the house, ah. and they are just the host. Yeah, that's a belief. So yeah. if you have this belief. How different is hospitality to you? How different do you, do you see strangers? Yeah. How differently do you experience life if everybody who might come to your house is the, is the person that owns the house? You're just catering to them. Yeah. That is incredible. <laughs> And we in the West, we have this a tendency to say, this is mine, this is yours. <laughs> right? I've worked for this, so it belongs to me. I'm, I'm, you know, I should have this. Yeah. Um, and then you have the divide, which is, to me, one of the biggest problems in the world is not wealth or poverty and i'm guessing many people would agree with this it's the difference between what what we have in terms of wealth mm. and what some people have in terms of poverty so the genie index is is one of the indicators that would represent that right the difference mm. the gap between rich and poor mm. which is widening which has been widening For, which keeps yeah, widening keeps which widening. is a huge problem and that is the thing that we are that, that we should address more attention and 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 power to Uh, because uh, this might be one of the things that would pull us into more wars. And is that why education is such a fundamental piece to yeah. your passion? Yes, I, I believe if we, I believe we 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 we're trying to we're trying to fight symptoms, mm. right? We have coaches, life coaches. We have, um, we have people that like uh, psychologists, and we have trauma trauma help, and and we have people going into prisons and and helping people come back from from addiction come back from violence yeah. um, trauma trauma all these things right and that's good because the damage has been done right yeah. and you know the old saying hurt people hurt people so it's a spiral totally. which we need to stop and then I, I think maybe as important or maybe more importantly to this is tweaking education making sure that we finally realize that um, the the things we haven't figured out in education are the things that lead us to have these experiences like violence like addiction like like lack of self love which yeah. leads us to comparing ourselves which leads us to resentment which leads mm -hmm. us to not being enough humanness right mm, lack of forgiveness lack yeah. of compassion lack of gratitude so rather than just including more uh, you know mindfulness exercises and 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 relationship uh, teaching into education that's one aspect I also feel like we should um, we should actually look at um, how can we how how can we mm, create an experience a learning experience that makes us that prepares us more to be humans with the mm. skills that we need and then um, put it individually in front of people so wherever they stand they can take the next step consciously and build themselves into a better human being. Amazing. And by that also tap into the creativity by that um, create a life for themselves with their mm. own business uh, scale that business make it successful ideally make it a meaningful business mm. um, if they share those values that's that's what gives me passion and it's all built on the drive to better education mm. so what does the realized version of all of this look like for you in terms of education and, and i feel like yeah so education should have more of what we just mentioned relationship yeah. aspects uh, business aspects um forgiveness gratitude mm -hmm. these things but that's the education piece but then right. the people that have been educated through that like what does the the like what do you foresee for people like is everybody setting up their own business and living according to their passions or is everyone just more capable with, as a human being to live mm -hmm. a more enriched life or so um Having a self-directed life is, to me, uh, a, a fundamental part. So, mm. so there's nothing wrong with being in a corporate job, right? Yep. So there's different people, and it doesn't have to do anything with capability or or, or laziness, mm. um, or, or or a leader or non-leader, right? It has to do with whatever brings you joy, yep. um, based on the experience you experiences you've had up until this point in time, right? Um, for me personally, I feel like a self-directed life based on um, the ability to choose freely at any point in time mm -hmm. and to to create um, in my case to create a potential for others mm -hmm. uh, is what drives me right mm. what I see is and I work a lot with companies that are working on te future technology what I see is inevitably we're going to have AI as a dominant um, as a dominant part in our lives right mm -hmm. hence we have some things that will be um, taken care of smartly by AI. 
this isn't the same old story about this isn't the story about um, you know AI stealing jobs and stuff. I actually don't believe in it. In fact, there's proof, um, there's data proof that um, AI right now is creating uh, 2.3 million new jobs, while uh, 1.8 million are are getting Le- taken yeah. away, deleted, kind of. Or well, mm. and um, and we've had this in history. We, there's a, there's a story of uh, William Lee who who created a a uh, weaving machine mm. um, that was six times faster than the hand weaving that his wife did. Mm. And he brought it to the queen at the time, the queen of England, um, and she refused to have it patented mm. because she said what would happen to the economy when all those jobs are taken away by an automated machine. Mm. Um, and now we have leaders saying, whoa, we, we can't study AI or we can't let AI take over because mm. it's going to take all of our jobs. That's not the story. The, the story is really how can we design better lives where mm. the inevitable is going to happen in, to a, in, a, in a positive yeah. way. So it's, you know, our phones are already helping us manage mm. our days better, right? We're going to have amazing smart systems in our homes and our phones that let us live a better life. Mm. So how do we use this technology to, one, let, let us lead? Um, self-directed lives where mm. we do the things we love whatever it is for the individual yeah. uh, where we have education which is 100% customized to the individual so what I say is a learning journey customized learning journey mm. where um, based on the data that you give the machine um, it understands you mm. where you stand what you want to learn uh, what you need to revise because mm. you might have lost some of it what relationships you have and what is coming up in your life what you want to develop into. And then customized to that, you'll learn only what's necessary. <laughs> and you revise whenever necessary. And you have this roadmap where you can where you can monitor the entire experience, mm. right? And then I'm guessing, well, some people might find this scary. Um, I find this in, empowering because you have, you have the choice in front of you. I feel like, to be honest, I know this is coming from the horse's mouth, but what you're reflecting on is what podcasting is to me. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Yes. Because basically I'm sitting down with the people that inspire me the most mm-hmm. to learn directly what is most content, like the burning questions in my heart. Mm-hmm. And so that is such a catered, unique, like insulated sort of learning program. Mm-hmm. Podcast inspired evolution affords mm-hmm. for me personally. And I, I think that's been the most transformative experience these last night, like last nine to 10 months that I've been working with the podcast. It's been an absolute game changer when you learn because my inspirations are obviously different to your inspiration so if you had a uh, if you had a if you had your own podcast there'd be different people in the podcast different mm-hmm. questions but ultimately that is I, 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 I can see the potency in what you're sharing is basically mm-hmm. what I'm saying because it's like it's one thing to like have like a formatted learning but when you're learning exactly what your burning desire is to learn mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and congratulations because you're making this happen for so many people and by that any of those experiences in any of the episodes you've created so many sub experiences mm. you already sparked so many ideas in so many people it's yeah you know, now there's the inspired, like the inspired podcasting course as well, which people have been dropping into and setting mm-hmm. up their own podcast. And this is consistently what I've been just sharing with them is like, you, it is your own school. You know, you learn your own thing because you're interfacing with your own people. And yeah, just watching the ripple effect of people just learning and burning with their own desires is super potent. I, I love what you're sharing here. It's yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. It's, a, it's really a beautiful vision for the future. And like, because yeah, if people can interface with that, then that is, yeah, that is such a beautiful vision, brother. I'm so excited. <laughs> you see, that's another thing. Are you excited about the future or are you, are you looking at the future in a, in a you know, in a fearful way? Mm-hmm. And that in itself is a part of funding happiness in the moment, right? Mm. So um, I, I've been pondering a lot about happiness. Mm. I feel like, and this is an interesting aspect because I'm, I'm, I'm 28 years old, right? Yeah. And some people would be like, whoa. Oh, well, isn't it something to ponder about when you're 60? You know, yeah. wise, you know white beard, and, you know, yeah. sitting around philosophizing. Um, I I feel like if we if we bring that to our attention right now, while we're living maybe the most impactful time of our lives, who knows? Then uh, we can live every moment moment thereafter mm. in full consciousness of where we want to go and what makes us happy, what makes us full. Uh, and not tap into into areas that are not us. Yeah. Right? So I've been pondering about this for over a year, over a half year now. Mm. Um, 
in coming up to a presentation about happiness that I'm giving next week. Yep. Um, and it's very, very interesting what is the the momentary outlook that you have, right? Is the future going to be better or is the future going to be worse? And I think we can actually take actions as much as happiness is something that happens in the in the moment without, you know, not designable, let's say. Mm. Um, I feel like there's definite steps that we can do towards towards becoming more happy. Mm. And um, I'm I'm just I'm just inspired by all these people that take a different angle and inspire me on on designing this for myself mm-hmm. and it's just a it's it's a fun journey mm. i have this system now where I'm, mm. where i'm looking at the the way of which which i can build better happiness mm. for myself consistently and uh it's it's evolving but i'm i've, I've now put it in a small system which i'm mm. living by and i'm, I'm loving it it's yeah. It's fulfilling me inside. Yeah, now. exciting. <laughs> Can't wait for you to share this. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> Amazing. So in that in that piece, what I was hearing was a lot of the expectancy effect. Hmm. Like expecting positive outcomes yeah. in the present moment uh, leads to happiness. Yeah. Um I feel like there's a lot of mm. there's a lot of truth in um I'm struggling with the term in English right now, but essentially uh, what Henry Ford said when he said whether you can't or whether you can, you both are right. usually right. Right. Yeah. He who uh, thinks you he think can, you can yeah. he who thinks he can't, both are usually right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of power in this. Isn't statement. it amazing? Yeah. And I feel like you, you know, some people criticize optimists, mm. right, for being optimistic, yeah. and they say, oh, no, you got to be realistic, mm. uh, which supposedly is the the opposite of it. And I feel no, um, I'm I'm creating my own reality mm. as in any any moment right and 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 if it's even if it's just the fundamental part of if i expect something good my um my body will react differently it Mm. will calm me down and just by that i have more capacity to be creative Mm. to be productive to be calm and connecting Mm. even if it's just that simple truth because that's that's measurable right Mm. um then that's already a uh, that's already a tick the box is ticked right but there's so much more to it um, and it's a, it's a, you know, it's, it, it goes exponential. It doesn't go linear where mm. one thing leads to the other, to the other, to the other. You have this base effect. You believe in yourself and out of that comes so many things Yeah, and the effect is, is incredible. So. I'm so glad you shared that. Thank you so much because I <laughs> often, welcome. um, yeah, I often have this dialogue between realism and optimism. And for me personally, I, I, I cultivate this mindset, which is, I know it's borderline delusional is that I am the i'm the dead weight hmm. for society mm-hmm. i'm the last one in line mm-hmm. you know and uh this comes from you know like whether i'm tapping into organic food or whether i'm tapping into like you know medications and like how to find natural medications or just you know whatever is like or social like education reform the fact i i continually cultivate the the idea that the fact that i'm tapped into it now Everybody else must already be on top. Mm, mm-hmm, you know? Mm. And people are like, no, 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 no. There's people that you need to spread this to. And I'm like, that's overwhelming. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm the dead weight. Mm. You know, I'm trying to push from behind, mm. you know, and just like, let's just go. <laughs> like, I need to just go on my journey to get myself to where everybody else is already at. Mm, thanks for sharing And this. that optimism fuels me to get more and more curious. And that fundamentally is what fuels the inspired evolution. Right, because in spite of evolution is like I'm taking massive ownership for my journey to evolve mm-hmm. because we're all in this together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're all evolving, right? So how much can I focus on my evolution? Because I'm the dead weight. Mm-hmm. I'm the last in line. So like, come on, like, come on, learn, learn like, get there, Amrit. You know, <laughs> taking responsibility, right? Yeah, exactly. And there's this there's this book called uh, The Responsibility Process by mm. Christopher Avery, yeah, uh, which I picked up uh, maybe a year ago. And it's talking about this. It's talking mm. about the fact that when something happens, something dreadful happens, we tend to blame first mm. either ourselves or some other like some other circumstance, and we we don't really change anything, mm. uh, especially not our state, unless we go into what he calls the responsibility process, mm. which is not blaming, which is not doubting yourself or or beating yourself up for something or somebody else, but it's about what you say, right? You go into responsibility. You say. I'm going to do X, Y, Z, mm. um, and whatever happens, right? But I take responsibility what I can, you know, oversee, what mm. I can control. 
And by that, each of us is slowly or maybe fast mm. investing in the change, right? Yeah, I love that. So. Yeah, mm. thank you so much. Um, man, I, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, you know, I want to take this, uh, I want to take a quick moment before we, before we weave out to, to first and foremost, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Right. It's thank been you great. so much for, for showing up and just sharing your energy with the Inspired Evolution. <laughs> it is such a blessing. Um, there's, you know, also a massive piece to talk to in terms of, you know, your past and everything you've been through and not living the, like, just the most conventional way and allowing your curiosity and your joy to infuse into the process so that we can, you know, everything that's brought us to this moment here. So thank you so much for the way you've held yourself and continue to, to cultivate um, Smiley Alex, and, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and just radiating that joy. And But also the depth that you continue to cultivate, you know, your curiosity really is such a joy to have that joy and curiosity, the depth and the humor, and they're like lined in together. <laughs> And on that, like, obviously, just blessings on, on the journey forward, brother. I'm, I'm so grateful. I, I really want to take that opportunity to thank you. Thanks um, so much. I've got two very last questions, and by no means the least questions. First one is, like, is there any message burning in your heart to share? Like, what is, yeah, is there anything in there that you want to share? If there's anything is to just spread what my granddad gave me mm. um, because it's given me so much. I know that my brothers reflect on it every day. Mm. And every time I share this with someone, um, people are people are somehow touched. Mm. So it's this message of... Um, Joyful be- diligence. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's it. It's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, bro. <laughs> and so, and uh, just lastly, and this is by no means least, um, beyond the skin, beyond the meat, beyond the masterminds, beyond the business on uh, endeavors, beyond everything. Um, it's esoteric. Who is who is Alex? Hmm. Who is Alex? I'm a very organized while crazy I would even say mm, I wouldn't say human I'm mm. let's say soul mm. I'm so what that means concretely is I live in the intersection of what I just shared so there's this aspect of you have to take action mm-hmm. if you want something to change. Mm-hmm. And I'm making it happen by putting out concrete aspects every day, being in so many things, but enjoying the ride mm-hmm. and taking responsibility for turning into action what needs to be done in my mm-hmm. eyes, right? And um, at the same time, the craziness, the spontaneity, the joyfulness, mm-hmm. the joy in it is the other balance. That's that's what makes me fulfilled. That's what makes me me. And the reason I don't say human but soul is I feel ever more that things are falling into place once you're, you know, in full integrity and once mm. you connect the dots, like Steve Jobs said. Mm. And um, it's phenomenal to see this ride of the dots connecting mm. and the universe aligning yeah. and things happening, like us meeting, this <laughs> joy just radiating, and all exploding. Such a blessing. <laughs> so it's this, it's this. It's this um, twofold, uh, yeah, energy That's combining. Right. Yeah. That's me. That's me. Oh. <laughs> Man, thank you so much for sharing. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so for those that want to tune into Alex's vibe, the easiest way or get in touch with Alex, sorry, tuning into his vibe is what you're doing at the podcast. Um, <laughs> the easiest way to get in touch with Alex? Um, so actually, yeah, t- two ways. Um, I have two websites that are relevant right now. Mm. One is Alex T. Stefan. T stands for my middle name, Thomas. Mm. Dot com. Stefan is S-T-E-F-F-A-N. E-N. So the E-N. Line, E-N. There we go. I'm S-T-E-F-F-E-N. So it's Thank Alex T, S-T, like Thomas, and then S-T-E-F-F-E-N dot com. The other one is for our mastermind is uh, growthmasters.me. Growthmasters.me. Growthmasters. Growthmasters. And that's where we create experiences that, um, you know, push people. Push awesome. people personally and professionally. So that's where you can find me. I, I have the social accounts on every social account. My mm. name is Alex T. Stefan. Yeah. And uh, yeah, reach out. Um, I'm happy to connect. 
I can't wait for you to connect with Alex. There's so much <laughs> joy in waiting for you here. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so brother. much, brother. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Love of the Inspired Evolution and sharing the Love of the Inspired Evolution. If you feel like this content may support, has supported you or may support anyone else that you know may resonate with the content of it, please share away and share the love around. Thank you guys so much. And to stay up to date on whatever's coming out with the Inspired Evolution, please subscribe. There's all these links in the bio for you to tune into the episodes and all these different platforms just so the message can get to you and your loved ones. Thank you so much for all your love and support. Stay inspired. It's too involved.